And this statement says that Condoleezza Rice let some information out that tells how dangerous President Bush actually is. You know, not really giving all the information, but just saying, hey, we need to really take a look at this. Let's go to the next bullet. What we are seeing here is, in a sense, the growing, the birth pains of a new Middle East. And whatever we do, we have to be certain that we're pushing forward to the new Middle East, not going back to the old Middle East. Now, we have to understand that that word, or that phrase, birth pains, that should start tying some things in for you right away. This is a direct quote from Condoleezza Rice. Birth pains. We are now about to go into a new Middle East. So, could it be that Jordan, Syria, and some of the other places that was called are very strategic lands that they're hitting to cause them to rise up against their government by hitting their unions, motivating people to protest. Hmm. I mean, all you have to do is start hitting people at work. And when you start hitting, hitting people on their jobs, hitting the unions, because see, the unions, they, they move mass people. And with the help of today, what my findings is, they said that Facebook motivated millions to meet in the square, told them where to be and when to be there. Wow. So people are now being able to be motivated not only by their jobs and unions and, and different places, but you can go direct now. Time. Information has increased. Let's go to the next. I have no interest in diplomacy for the sake of returning Lebanon and Israel to the status quo, um, Auntie Rice said. And yet sometimes a return to the status quo is the best you can hope for in this region. I could have rushed over and started shuttling, but it wouldn't have been clear what I was shuttling to, uh, to do. Well, for starters, you could have saved hundreds of lives, preserved billions of dollars in property, and perhaps stemmed the tide of rising anti-Israeli and by extension anti-American passion. So now what we have is, and these are these are all quotes from Condoleezza Rice, and she's saying that if you remember. Uh, 2006, there was a lot of turmoil over in that, that region. Um, they were shooting back and forth, and each side was blaming the other. When you, you know, uh, see houses bombed and schools being bombed, you know, they put the images on TV and say, look what they're doing. But it's actually going back and forth. You have the U.S. who's supposed to who are, who's saying that they're brokering a peace agreement, and here they are saying, hey, we're just gonna let it go, basically what she's saying, because it's time for a new Middle East. This is the birthing pangs. Some people are gonna die, yes. That's what she's saying. And we could save many lives had we jumped in there, but what would we actually do? What will we really achieve? So if we let this go on, the birth pains and after the birth pains, a new Middle East would happen. So this sounds like it's being fueled by some people at some round tables. Rice, new Middle East comment fueled fury over U.S. policy. Ravish, would you read that one as well? Since, since the terrorist attacks of 9-11, Washington has sought to distance itself mm. from authoritarian, authoritarian 
regimes in the Arab world and promote the de um, democratic the democratization huh, to counter religious extremism. So we see 9-11 promoting what? Democracy. So there is an effort to have these nations and these countries fight against each other. And dare I even say, maybe that was even the motivation between not before 9-11. Remember no planes could leave off the ground for 45 minutes and our jets, air force, trained to be anywhere in the country within 10 minutes. But 45 minutes they could not get off the ground because they had some things shifting being the Twin Towers, okay? So that tells me even something more that there's a motivation that goes back even further than this. And it actually does, but I just wanted to, I just wanted to touch bases with current events and let's kind of get a sense of what's going on. This, what we see is not just now happening. It's been happening, it's been, it's been targeted, it's been planned, and things are going according to plan. The last button, uh, Bullet, anyone? But in the bungled invasion of Iraq, freedom has been accompanied by bloody sectarian conflict. Elsewhere in the region, elections have produced gangs for Islamist groups that are anti-American, prompting the U.S. rethink of the strategy. Okay, I'm hit lightly on this. Just, just to give just an idea. You have all kinds of agencies that you can tap into when you want to upset a region. You have political, you have uh, jobs, you have education, you have uh, health, uh, you have everything, all of these things at your uh, disposal. But you also can motivate gangs. If you supply them with ammunition, you give them some drugs to sell, they go out there and sell it, make plenty of money. Then you have turf wars. Money fuels people. And if you pay them, they'll work for you. So this is what we're hearing here. And look at the different countries. We got Iraq in there now. and the word freedom. And isn't that the word that we use in this country? We are going into that country and free the people. There seems to be an underlining strategy here. And I'm coming to a close with this, so I just wanted you to see um, can someone turn off the light? I don't know. I, I hope the camera will still be able to pick this up well, but we'll do it for a quick second. Um, we'll do it for a second. If you can see this, maybe just go ahead to the right. If you can see this, if the events of the people didn't give you enough to consider the time we let's look at this. Shocking mass animal deaths around the world. We got 10,000 tons of, uh, a thousand, 100 tons of fish died in uh, South America. We got hundreds of snappers, uh, Paris and New Zealand. We have thousands of fish were floating dead in the Philippines. 150 tons of red uh, tilapia dead in Thailand. Uh, scores of dead fish in Haiti. Uh, 50 to 100. Um, Jack Rawls, I don't know what type of fish that is, dead in Norway, um, over 300 domes in Italy, and there's still more that I didn't list. I wanted to give you an example. If you see all of these blue dots, these are the places in the United States. There's more over here. Uh, Brazil, 
we have over in Europe, we have uh, Norway, uh, Italy over there. So if you see all of these blue um, spots, these are all the different places that animals have been found dead. Fish, birds, uh, seals, crabs, uh, cows. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that I didn't list, a partial list here. And if that didn't convince you that we are in a very particular time, biblical time, February 1st, and I'm, I'm very current with this. I'm showing you headline stuff that you would read today. Mount Kirishma, a volcano on the southern island of Kyushu, began erupting on January 26th. An eruption on the first was uh, one of nine times larger than 1959. Uh, the eruption of the volcano, its previous largest, said that the National Institution, Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology in Japan actually shot out over one mile. What you're looking at here, here's below Australia, Asia, coming on over to North America, and South America. This is what they call the Ring of Fire. These are volcanic liabilities. All of these small pieces that you see are different places where volcanoes are live. What happens if, let me ask this, if you ever seen a demolition, they go into a building and put uh, dynamite throughout that building. What is the purpose of that? Bring it down. To bring it down, right? Fast. Exactly, to bring it down fast. Look at that. We're sitting, and California, they have already said a few years ago, if anyone remember, I stated before, that they have announced on television to California, they said, it's not if, it, said, it is when. When it blows over here, California will be no more. They're saying that California has, at that moment, that was maybe five years ago, they said California may have 30 years, no longer. So they're telling Californians to prepare themselves to get out. And this is the warning to them. But you know, people are not leaving. They're not leaving. But I heard it. I saw it on television, the news. And I also uh, spoke it when we came together, for those who may remember. They are saying, get out of California while you have an opportunity, because California will be no longer. So this mountain uh, volcano happened on February 1st. Now remember, we've had uh, the 31st, we've had 